Let's take a minute to explore inputs, ways that you can use App Inventor to receive user input. I'm going to go to projects and make a new project and call it input app, just as, a, as an example. Whatever project you were working on will be saved and you'll be transferred into this new app called input app. So there are different widgets, different tools we can use to take input. The easiest is a button. The button, you can click it, you can long click it. Long click just means hold it down. Another one is a text box. Text boxes let you type words, numbers, uh, text in them. Date pickers let you pick dates. Time pickers let you pick times. So if you have an app that you want to make to receive a particular date or time, you can use these, these uh, widgets right here. Check boxes let you check off one or more things. Um, what are some other input sliders? So I'm going to pull a slider in here. We're going to use a slider in a minute. If you need a text box to take a password, because you know password boxes show stars instead of your password, uh, you can use a password text box. And a spinner is kind of like a, a, a radio button or a multiple choice question. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll put a spinner in. We'll talk about these four inputs. Button, text box, slider, and spinner. Now, just just for to have some way to see what we're doing, I'm going to drag a label in here to be our output. So we have a button called button one, and we'll we'll need to to learn to rename these things soon, but not right now. We have a text box called text box called text box one. We have a slider called slider one, and then we have a spinner called spinner one, and of course our label is called label one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect myself to the emulator. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to accelerate. Ah, it says I need to start the AI starter. Don't forget to start your AI starter. And I have mine pinned to the start menu here. Um, I'm going to accelerate through this process of getting the emulator booted. On your computer, it's going to take a little bit longer. So um, see you when this is done. Looks like we're all set to go. I'm going to reorganize my screen a little bit. I'm going to um, tear out this App Inventor tab. You can actually tear tabs out of browsers um, and then, then move them around. So I'm going to make my App Inventor screen take up the left-hand side of my screen and just a little bit more. And then I'm going to make my emulator stand over here on the right-hand side and I made a little bit more room for my blocks. All right, so now I can work on it and I can see it on the same screen. Feel free to move your windows around as you need to. You may even have your, your video window open in a, in a section and your App Inventor window open in another section. So without putting, you, you know this from, from previous work, without putting any blocks in, none of these tools really do anything. That, that opens a spinner that has nothing on it. You can use that little go back button right there to, to bring us back. So let's look at a button. First thing first is a button. And I can, I can change the text on this button to make it say something like push me. And that's fine. And then over here it should update and say push me. And it does. So I'm going to go to the blocks and say when button one is clicked. So there's an event of the click event. When button one is clicked, I want to do something. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to change the label. Remember, button, text, slider, spinner, these are inputs, and the label is going to be my output. And there are different properties about this label that I can change. One of them is the text. So I want to set label one's text to something. Oh, I'm just going to make make some words and say, set label one's text to the button was clicked. And now when I push the button, label one is going to say the button was clicked. When I push the button, label one is going to say the button was clicked. So the push me button is the input and the label and the label changing is the output. 
let's look at other things we can do. So here is a text box. The text box can also be an input. So I can take the words that they type into the text box and I can display those words on the label. So instead of saying the button was clicked, I can go to text box one, and again, text box one has a lot of things it knows about, but one of the things it knows is what, what the user typed in, and that's the text. I want to talk for just a minute because there are two text box one dot text blocks. There's one of them that is a lighter colored text box one dot text, and it has a pokey thing. And there's a darker colored text box one dot text, which also comes with the word set, and it has an anything. And you would almost plug those two together, but that doesn't make any sense at all. But what does make sense is I can plug the text box one dot text value into label one's text. So this is a setter, set label one's text. And this is a getter, get text box one's text. This says, when I click the button, go to the text box, get its text, and put that text in the label. I'm going to drag these pieces into the trash can. You can also right click on it and say delete. And then when I push the push me button, whatever was typed in the text box appears on the label. Well, I hadn't typed anything in the text box. Here I can type hello. And now when I push the button, the word hello is transferred to the label. So the push me button is one kind of input. It receives click events. The text box is one kind of input. It can receive text. And uh, you can also make a text box so that it only knows how to receive numbers. If you wanted to have a box that only received numbers, you would change the properties of text box one. And one of the properties of text box one is this check box called numbers only. If the numbers only box is checked, then text box one won't let you type in any words. It'll only take numbers. See how my keyboard is, is numbers? If I switch to letters, none of the letters will go in the text box. It's just numbers, three, four, five. And then when I push me, it transfers those numbers down to the label. The label is your output, the push me button, and the text box are your inputs. Now let's talk about the slider. You may have interacted with a slider. Well, if you've dealt with a volume control, if you've ever fast forwarded in a video, you've dealt with a slider before. A slider is this thing that you can slide to one side or the other or anywhere in between. It looks all scrunched up here because we haven't told it how wide it should be. Well, I'm gonna make my slider as wide as the screen is. So where it says width, I'm just gonna choose fill parent. And as long as this slider is within the window, then its width is going to be as wide as the screen is. Over here on the emulator, we can see that I can slide that slider left, I can slide that slider right, and I can drop it anywhere in between. You can also change the colors if you want to pick your school colors. I know that my, sc my school colors are blue and green. Then I can pick blue and green as my slider colors. That's not quite my school colors, but that's, 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 that's an attempt. So we are sliding somewhere between the minimum value and minimum and maximum, like if we're talking volume, minimum might need to be zero and maximum might need to be a hundred. If we're talking number of people who are going to the beach, minimum number of people might be one and maximum number of people I know for my car is five. So we might be sliding somewhere in between one and five. So it's the same distance that's being traveled by the slider. It's just proportionally we're going from zero to whatever, we're going from minimum to maximum. Um, I'm going to say my min is 5 and my max is 25 just to pick some numbers for us to play with. And then once I've got my slider ready I can look at the blocks and see how to use the blocks to read that slider's position. So if you look at your slider 1, there's things, a lot of things we know about it, but at the top of this list is an event called position changed. It's the same color as when button 1 is clicked because they're both the same kind of thing. They're events. They're things that the user can do that the app can recognize, ah, oh, the user did something. So what I want to do when the slider position is changed, I want to put that position in label 1's text. So I want to set label 1's text to the place where the thumb is on the 
on the slider. Well, you can see here there's this little little thumb position. If you ho it doesn't help if you click it. You have to hover over it to get your getter and your setter for thumb position. We want a getter. We want the thing that plugs in there. And so now, when the slider's position is changed, we're going to set the label's text to wherever the, the number that represents where their thumb landed. So if I move it all the way up here, it's going to be our maximum value. If I move it all the way down here, it's going to be our minimum value. And anywhere I stop in between, you can see that label's value is changing based on where the thumb is. So that's how a slider works. You can slide between minimum and maximum values, and these sliders only produce numbers. Now our last input that we're going to talk about in this video is the spinner. And the spinner is not exactly, it's, it's, it doesn't spin. Um, but let's go back to our designer and let's look at the spinner and see the things we can change about it. It's a smaller thing than a slider here. We can set our width to a certain width. If, if we say fill parent, then the width of this drop down box is going to be the width of the screen. We can say prompt, um, choose your, your favorite color. And then when I click away from there, the, the, the spinner will say, when I click it, choose your favorite color. Again, there's nothing for me to choose, so I have to use my back button to get back. So how do I make a list of things for them to choose? I go up here where it says elements from string, and I type in like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. A list of anything separated by commas. And then I can choose my favorite color from this list, and that list is scrollable, and whatever I choose, it dismisses the window, and then I see the value there. So what I want to do is when someone chooses something from the spinner, I want to transfer that down to our label, our output. So back to the blocks we go, and just as we did for the button, for the button we said when button one is clicked. For the slider, we said when the position when the position is changed. For the spinner, we say after selecting. And then what we do is we set the label or whatever. We can use the selection in a calculation if we want to. We don't always have to set a label's text. But in our example, we're setting a label's text to their selection. And just like we did with the thumb position, we hover. And then we get the selection. And now if they choose a color and they choose green, then our label says green. But we can still push me and get the words, and we can still slide and get our numbers. And so all of these inputs are affecting the same output here. And by coordinating and choosing appropriate inputs, maybe if you want to have um, a calculator, you can have two text inputs, and then you might want to have a, um, a, a, a spinner here to choose. Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? And then you can have a button for calculate, for instance. There are lots of ways we can organize and arrange these in inputs, and those will then provide our app with the information it needs to produce the appropriate output.